What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Neo, Tesla, Spy, Nvidia, a couple of other tickers, what the news is saying about the market, what you should be watching for as we approach tomorrow. But before I break into all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. Anyways, let's talk about what's going on with NEO in the markets. NEO is currently down about 2.84% for the day, slowing down many stocks out there. But for the most part, the market was very, very flat today, very choppy. And NEO is remaining very, very flat as well, a little bit in the red. But I'm saying it's flat because when you look at the 4-hour, we've been range bound between 8.2 and 7.11. So the question is, how is NEO going to move? How is the market going to move? This is going to depend on many different factors, which I'm going to talk about over the next couple of minutes. First off, for tomorrow, I want to call out that we have more data coming out. We have the house price index being reported, plus we have consumer confidence at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, alongside more manufacturing numbers. Then after that, we have a lot, a lot of these Fed speakers will be listening to see what the Fed has to say. I also want to call out that when it comes to uh, Tuesday, we don't really have too much for earnings coming out, just like Intuit and just a couple of others. But then by the time we get to Wednesday through Thursday, we have bigger ones coming out. We have like Salesforce, CRM, Foot Locker, Dollar Tree, lots of retail for Wednesday. And Thursday is when we have Dell and Big Lots. Dell is going to be the biggest one for the week. So we'll be watching these very carefully. As far as Neo goes, Neo tweeted that after nine years of striving, innovation, uh, you know, determination to create the best experience for their users. They're actually working very hard for Blue Skies. And once again, it's their ninth anniversary. So congratulations to Neo. This is good news for them. And the thing is, Neo is still a relatively new company, right? It's only been about nine years. The EV space is a very, very difficult company to be entering in because it's very hard to be mass producing and simultaneously being like profitable. So we'll be watching to see how Neo goes, at least moving forward. For the time being, I just want to talk about how things are looking. And as of right now, they're not looking too bad, at least for Neo, as it's still kind of like range trading between support and resistance. There's also some talk about how Neo was talking about how robots could replace 30% of the workforce by 2027 to improve efficiency and cut costs. That may sound kind of crazy to a lot of people out there, but that's not necessarily the case. So when it comes to a lot of these uh, jobs, I just want to call out that not every single job has to be replaced by a straight up uh, AI that's like as intelligent as a human and capable of doing every single function that a human had to has to do. We have robots like these, and with the systems of automation, we're continuing to see this affect jobs on a daily basis. And Neo is correct that automation could affect them. I don't know if one third of their workforce is gonna be cut, but it is a possibility. And if they are correct about that, then I just want the best for everyone out there. I want the best for the people out there who are who may be losing jobs because of automation. This is something that also happens in America. Uh, and if anything, if this does cut costs for Neo, this has its benefits. So we'll be watching to see if this is a reality. Right now, there's no guarantee this is going to happen. So we'll just see what happens over the next couple of years. This is just a few years into the future, and we will see what else happens as time goes on. Neo is also mentioning that it's not just automation, but also like AI and robots playing another big role in this potentially happening. I think that for the longer term, yes, that's going to be, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to be like much bigger for the short term. Not as sure about AI specifically doing this th that soon, like over the next two, three years. But automation for sure is going to have a big effect on uh, employment and et cetera. So we'll be watching that as the years go by. Uh, but for now, I just want to focus on the technicals. We have 33.6 million in volume. On top of that, there's not really anything changing when it comes to short volume on the stock. Price price ratio is dropping as new is losing some strength. Tuesdays tend to be better days as it's green about 55% of the time. And on top of that, everything else is just the same. So what do I see for NEO? From a technical standpoint, it's looking bearish. We've been downtrending for the last couple of days, and it looks like it's trying to approach this 7.11 area to $7 flat, which is where we have some key support. Now, NEO is getting very close to this key support. We're not quite there yet, and I think that the overall market could affect it. Uh, there's been some negative news as well, but I'm going to be breaking down some things about SPY. As of right now, NEO looks like it could drop a little bit more. We'll be watching the 7.11 area, see if Neo breaks to a new low because $7 flat is going to be the next level. And we're approaching some critical support. So it, right now, Neo looks bearish. I will be talking more about Neo in just a few minutes. But I just want to talk about SPY. So on SPY, we had a very sideways day. Very sideways. We pumped and dumped and pumped and dumped all day. Watch 454 as critical support. If we lose that, there's going to be likely a move to about 
452. I think that's where we could see this thing start sinking. We could even interpret this as like a head and shoulders like pattern. We're going to be watching 454 holds. We're looking bearish on the four hour time frame. But nothing is guaranteed just yet. We could be forming, a, we could be flagging right from where we currently are on SPY. We'll see if we get some kind of breakout or not. As of right now, we're kind of downtrending on this channel, so this might continue going into tomorrow. But we'll see if we get some kind of breakout. If we break this upper resistance, we could try to get back above 455. If we fail at the lower resistance and we lose 454, especially, that's going to be another bearish signal. 452 will be the next level, and we'll be watching that very, very carefully. As far as Tesla goes, uh, Tesla right now is trying to base at this 230 area. As it's trying to base right over here, uh, you can see that it's continuing to ping pong very nicely. And we have a nice bullish looking setup. This imbalance is going to fill nicely 242 coming. We could continue to trade sideways between 238 and 235. But the thing about Tesla is 238 is this resistance that we keep testing. And I think we're eventually going to break it as we're forming like a nice wedge. I think that it's going to break 238 by Friday at the latest. Not Friday, I would say by Thursday at the latest. I think 242 plus is coming to 245, and I anticipate some upside for Tesla. With IWM, I think that there is, once again, potential in this. Uh, very flat day. It's not really decisive. If we lose 178, watch it come down towards 176. If we break 179, next level is going to be 180 plus. As far as Apple goes... Completely flat day. We did close below our key uh, support at 190, which is a signal we might see this thing retrace towards 188. As of right now, Apple is looking a little weaker. Uh, it could be establishing a new change in market structure. This could lead to some downsides. So you just want to be very careful. Looking a little bit more bearish, but I think we're going to be watching how 188 holds. And then when it comes to the QQQ, we have a head and shoulders like pattern. If we end up losing support around 388, I anticipate it's going to start sinking towards 386.5. If we lose that, there's 385 and 384. And then it's going to start sinking if we end up seeing that play out. But we have this head and shoulders like pattern, which suggests that there could be more downside coming towards 385. So be very careful, guys. That is something that's risky. And then finally, for NVIDIA, this thing is starting to curl right here. We have a potential inverse head and shoulders like structure on the four hour. On the 30 minutes, it looks like it's still developing. So right here, if you look at the 30 minutes, NVIDIA might sink a little bit more, but we'll be watching to see if this 475 area holds and might sink and back test this and then try to bounce. If we bounce off 475.5 and start pushing back above 180, uh, 485, excuse me, I'll be bullish. I think NVIDIA is going to bounce. If we lose 475, I turn bearish, and I think it's just going to continue to sink because this could always be a trap. So it all depends on this test. Do we come down a bit and then bounce, or do we come down and just start sinking? I think it's going to drop a little bit more, but we'll be watching to see if there's some kind of bounce or not. So that being said, some technicals are kind of weak. Others are kind of like flat. Neo, it looks like on the 30 minutes time frame, is trying to like base from here. I think we're very close to some critical support. The four hour is still looking a bit bearish, however. And I think that we're going to be watching 7.11. We have some critical support right there. It's about 7.14. So the 7.1s, it's about $7 is where we have some tight support. So it might drop a little bit more. If we see 7.11, we could see a balance and you know, a retest of these higher levels. So look for a little bit of downside. And then we'll see if we get some buyers that step in, in the very low sevens. And then we'll see how it goes from there. But if anything, I would say that Neo, although it's looking a bit more bearish, uh, it could drop a little bit more, but we'll see if the buyers try to step in and try to get this thing to like balance. So we're going to be watching that very, very carefully. But with that being said, uh, I just want to make it as clear as possible. Neo could drop a bit more. Watch it base between 7 and 7.1. Uh, the 7.1s basically. Uh, we're very close to that right now. And I think it's going <laughs> to, excuse me, I think it's going to rebound a little bit. So watch it drop and try to make its way up to 7.4. And I think there's a good chance of that potentially playing out. On the daily time frame. Neo looks a little bearish right now. It looks like it could drop a little bit more. Uh, that's why I was talking about us seeing some more downside. So watch and see if seven holds. It looks like it's going to test lower sevens and then try to bounce. We'll see if the buyers step in. Historically, we have some nice support right around that area at $7. So hopefully the buyers come back and they try to push it back up. We're still developing a bullish divergence. Even if it does drop a bit more, it could still be developing. And then we'll see if we get a bounce at seven. So watch that test right now. As of right now, it's looking a bit more bearish. We could see some downside, but we'll see how it goes. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for listening. Have a great day and peace out.